Everyone thinks cattle just need grass and time to grow. But what if I told you space could make or break their weight gain? Today we'll uncover how the wrong area can literally stop your bulls from reaching their full potential. The real number might shock you. The question seems so simple, doesn't it? How much space do cattle need? Most people will throw out a number, something like one acre, or maybe two acres per cow. And while that's a starting point, it's also one of the most dangerous oversimplifications in the entire world of ranching. Sticking to a generic number without understanding the principles behind it is like trying to build a house with only a hammer. You're missing the most important tools. The real answer isn't a single number, it's a strategy. And getting this strategy wrong doesn't just mean less profit, it can mean sick animals, ruined land, and a feed build that spirals out of control. Let's start with the biggest hidden factor that space controls, stress. We don't often think of cattle as being stressed, but they are incredibly sensitive creatures. When they are overcrowded, even slightly, their bodies release a hormone called cortisol. You can think of cortisol as the anti-growth hormone. It tells the body to store energy, to prepare for a threat, and to stop building muscle. Have you ever had an animal that just seemed to be a hard keeper? You give it the best feed, the cleanest water, and it still struggles to put on weight? Often the invisible culprit is chronic stress from improper spacing and social pressure. They don't have enough room to establish a comfortable social order, so there's constant low-level competition. This invisible pressure is a silent profit killer. And the worst part is that almost nobody knows it's happening until they see the disappointing numbers on the scale. To truly master space, you have to understand two key terms that are often used interchangeably but are completely different, stocking rate and stocking density. Getting this right is the secret that separates the pros from the amateurs. Stocking rate is the big picture. It's the number of animals on a total pasture area for the entire grazing season or even the whole year. For example, having 20 cows on a 40-acre property for the year. Stocking density, on the other hand, is a snapshot in time. It's the number of animals on a specific piece of ground right now. You could have those same 20 cows, but packed into a one-acre paddock for just one day. That's a very low stocking rate, but a very high stocking density. Why does this matter? Because confusing the two is the root of the most common and costly mistake in cattle management, continuous overgrazing. Most people use a set it and forget it approach. They open the gate to their big pasture and let the cattle roam freely all season. They think because the overall stocking rate seems low, everything is fine. But what actually happens? The cattle are selective. They're smart. They'll go straight to their favorite spots, the areas with the tastiest, most nutritious grasses, and they'll eat them down to the dirt. They keep coming back to those same spots over and over again, never giving the best plants a chance to recover. Meanwhile, they ignore the less tasty plants, which then grow, go to seed, and eventually take over the pasture. Over time, your high-quality forage disappears, and you're left with a field of weeds. Your cattle's nutrition drops, their health suffers, and your land degrades. You're effectively overgrazing the best parts of your pasture while undergrazing the worst parts. Have you seen this on your own property? Those patches of bare earth near the water trough while other corners of the field are overgrown with plants the cows won't touch? That is the classic sign of a spacing strategy gone wrong. So, how do we find the right number for your land? We have to stop thinking about acres and start thinking about food. The proper term is carrying capacity, which is the amount of forage your land can produce sustainably year after year. The first step is to understand the basic unit of measurement, the animal unit, or AU. One AU is generally defined as a 1,000-pound mature cow with or without a calf. A bigger bull might be 1.5 AUs, and a young steer might be 0.75 AUs. This just gives us a standard to work with. Now, how much does that 1,000-pound cow eat? A good rule of thumb is that a cow will consume about 2 to 3% of its body weight in dry forage every single day. For our standard cow, that's 20 to 30 pounds of dry grass 
every single day. Now for the most important rule of pasture management, take half, leave half. To keep your pastures healthy and productive, you should never let your cattle graze more than 50% of the available forage. The remaining 50% is crucial. Part of it is the solar panel of the plant, the leaf area it needs to capture sunlight and regrow quickly. The other part gets trampled into the ground, feeding the soil microbes, building organic matter, and creating a natural fertilizer. When you graze too much, you're not just taking food from the cow for tomorrow, you're crippling the factory that produces the food. So if your pasture produces 4,000 pounds of dry forage per acre in a season, only 2,000 pounds of that is actually available for your cattle to eat. With these numbers, you can start to see how a simple one cow per acre rule falls apart. An acre in the lush, rainy fields of Kentucky might produce over 8,000 pounds of forage, giving you 4,000 pounds of available feed. But an acre in the dry rangelands of West Texas might only produce 1,000 pounds of forage, giving you only 500 pounds to work with. That's an eight-fold difference. The same number of cattle would thrive in one location and starve in the other, destroying the land in the process. You must match your herd size to what your land can actually produce. This is where the concept of high-density, short-duration grazing, often called rotational grazing, becomes the most powerful tool you have. It solves almost every problem we've discussed. Instead of one big pasture, you use temporary fencing to divide it into smaller paddocks. You then concentrate the entire herd into one small paddock for a very short period, maybe just one or two days. This is that high stocking density we talked about. Because they're in a small area, they eat everything, not just their favorite plants. They eat the grass down uniformly to about 50%, and then you move them to the next fresh paddock. Think of it like this. A continuous pasture is like a giant, messy buffet that's open all day. The cattle pick out all the best food first, leaving a mess, and the food quality slowly goes down. Rotational grazing is like serving them a fresh, perfectly prepared, high-nutrition salad bar every single day. They get the best of the best, and they eat it all. While they're in the new paddock, the one they just left, has a long period of rest, typically 30 to 90 days, to fully recover and regrow. This rest period is magical. It allows the best grasses to deepen their roots, making them more drought resistant. It breaks the life cycle of intestinal parasites because the larvae and the manure die off before the cattle return. And the intense hoof action from the herd tramples manure and organic matter into the soil, dramatically improving its fertility over time. You end up with healthier cattle, healthier land, and a drastically reduced need for expensive inputs like fertilizer and dewormer. For a small producer, this might look like using a few reels of polywire and some step-in posts to create a new paddock every few days. It's a low-cost, high-impact system. For a large rancher, it involves more permanent planning of paddocks and water sources, but the principle is identical. The initial setup requires some thought and a little more labor, but the long-term payoff is immense. You are quite literally growing more grass, which allows you to support more cattle on the same amount of land, all while improving the land itself. You move from being a cattle owner to a true grass farmer, and that is where real profitability and sustainability lie. So the answer to how much space is not a number of acres, it is the amount of space that provides enough forage to meet your herd's daily needs while leaving enough behind for the pasture to rapidly recover. It's a dynamic, living equation that changes with the seasons, with rainfall, and with the health of your soil. It requires you to walk your pastures, to observe, and to manage proactively. But by shifting your mindset from acres to forage and from continuous grazing to rotational management, you unlock the full potential of your land and your animals. You stop fighting against nature and start working with it. The result isn't just heavier, healthier bulls and cows, it's a legacy of productive land that can support your operation for generations to come. If this conversation has sparked an idea or made you look at your pastures a little differently, then our mission here is working. 
we are a community of ranchers, farmers, and cattle enthusiasts dedicated to sharing knowledge that makes a real difference on the ground. This isn't just about videos, it's about building better operations together. To join us on this journey, be sure to subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow and turn on notifications so you never miss out. We want to hear from you. Drop a comment below and tell us what's the biggest challenge you face with your pastures? Is it weeds, drought, or something else entirely? Your experience is valuable to everyone here. And finally, if you know another rancher or farmer who could benefit from this information, please share this video with them. Here, we are all here to grow together as responsible and profitable stewards of our animals and our land. Let's keep learning and let's keep getting better. See you in the next one.